Hello everyone, welcome to the end of day wrap here on finals day. It's the final day of the final Pro Tour here at Dragon's Maze. Rich Hagen, Brian David Marshall with you to take you through all the action. First of all, BDM, of today. What happened in the top eight? Well, you know, the, the top eight, we had five Sphinx's Revelation decks. We had three, two aggro decks and one mid-range deck. Mm -hmm. And one by one, the Sphinx's Revelation decks went by the wayside. Well, one of them had to go by the wayside because Makahita Mahara against Matei Zatalkai was essentially an Esper Control mirror. It went the full five games, but it didn't take all that long, it turns out. Uh, yeah, you know, it was kind of one of the things that was surprising to us, you know, we, we do a lot of logistical planning when we, we're, 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 we're arranging the matches, like, well, this match will still be going on on Tuesday. You know, mm -hmm. Esper Control versus Esper Control, but really, uh, you know, at some point the game hits a critical turning point and it's just blue fireballs in Aetherling swinging back and forth across the red zone, uh, taking, eating up life in huge eight point chunks. So Mihara won that one. Now Dusty Ochoa came in, uh, he had a couple of pro tours before now. He was up against Rob Castell one of the great breakout stories of the weekend. A level two judge was going to judge at a PTQ, ended up playing, winning, came here, made it all the way to the top eight, but didn't make it to the semis. Yeah, Castellan has one of my favorite decks in this tournament. We had, we had a chance to do a deck tech with him. Mm -hmm. If you want to see what that deck does, what we've been calling four color chant. Um, yeah, but he, he, he had a couple of unfortunate draws early in the match and Dusty uh, Ochoa just playing great magic was able to dispatch him in advance to the semifinals. The most comfortable of the quarterfinals was Josh Atalayton's 3-1 win over Andrew Shrout. Yeah, Andrew Shout, Johnny Hot Sauce, uh, coming off of the mocks it at PAX East, uh, playing in his first Pro Tour. He was playing for a shot at the Rookie of the Year, as was Castellan, but he fell. Uh, he ran afoul of the little red creatures. We saw uh, Josh Arnold just come out of the gates very quick. Foundry Sheet Denizen, Burning Tree Emissary, Burning Tree Emissary into some other you know Gore variety House, of two Shane jobs. Walker. Yeah, Gorehouse Chain Walker mm -hmm. and just hit you for a ton of damage. Uh, Josh's the deck was just firing on all cylinders. And then we had a five game set between Craig Wesco of the United States against Latvia's Andre Prost. To say it went all the way, but in the end, Wesco's white weenie, lots of green in there as well. Call of the Conclave, Advent of the Worm, Dryad Militants and so on, got the job done. And that set up a semi-final for him against the reigning player of the year, Josh Atalayton. And Wesco, where he was picking up some speed. He ended up winning that one in four. Yeah, J Josh Otter Layton hated this matchup. He found it to be terrifying. They both, you know, had decks that operated in a similar way. Mm -hmm. Small creatures, you know, a couple of uh, tempo advantages. But Craig Wesco's creatures were bigger and hardier than Josh Otter Layton's. He felt it was a worse matchup than the one he found in the waiting for him in Worlds when he faced off against Junior Iyanaga. Well, Mahara had already won one Esper Control Mirror, then he faced another against Dustin Ochoa. This time though, in the crucial fifth game, he couldn't find the land he needed. Ochoa drew ahead and ended up with Etherlings and Sin Collectors and all the cards in the world. And even a world champion from 2006 like Mahara couldn't deal with that. So we had a final of Craig Wesco with his white green weenie horde against the Esper Control of Dustin Ochoa. BDM, what happened? Well, what happened is not what we expected. Everybody in the booth, me, you, and Luis Scott Vargas all put Ochoa on having the win over Craig Wesco, but that's not the way it played out at all. He did not even win a game. Craig Wesco came out, again, all guns firing. Uh, he, you know, he had Dryad Militants, he had Calls of the Conclaves, he had Populate. Uh, you know, he used Voice of Resurgence, one of the breakout cards from Dra the new Dragon's Maze set. This card lived up to the hype all the way. You really saw did. it in its glory. You know, he would, you know, Azorius charm it to the top of uh, Craig's deck and it would leave a token in its place. He would Supreme Verdict and he would regenerate his experiment one, get a token from the Voice of Resurgence and not even miss a beat. And keep the beatings coming. And uh, he took it in three games, became a Pro Tour champion. It's amazing. We've seen Craig Wesco for years going to PTQs, coming to Grand Prix. He's really turned on the Jets in the last couple years. This is his third top eight in three California Pro Tours over the past few years. 
to see him finally get the win after that long. It was, it was a very emotional ceremony when you talked to him. We talked about having a team that, you know, he just thought was the best team. You know, we talked about Channel Fireball. We talked about Star City Games. We talked about the European Union. But in the end, Team Luxurious Hair put the, pro, the trophy in Craig Wesco's hands. Indeed. Now, we talked about the award ceremony. There was so much to give away because, of course, we had World Magic Cup races. 72 champions are now ready to rock and roll at Amsterdam later in the year. We had the World Championship lined up. 16 players, one of whom is Craig Wesco now, will be going to Amsterdam to play for that title later in the year. And then, of course, you had Rookie of the Year, Felipe Tapia Becerra. Huge shout out to Chile and to Latin America more generally. Magic on the rise there and a worthy, worthy winner of Rookie of the Year. And we must leave, of course, with Josh Utterleighton, the Player of the Year. And just a terrific achievement, BDM, and thoroughly well-deserved. Yeah, working on his campaign for the 2018 Class of the Hall of Fame. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, that's kind of crazy. I mean, he already has a Hall of Fame career. We're talking about people with four top eights uh, winning major trophies like a Player of the Year mm -hmm. trophy as being, you know, uh, om almost locked in Hall of Fame candidates. Makahito Mahara, someone that I know I'm going to be voting for this year mm -hmm. for the Hall of Fame as he got his fourth top eight to go along with his world championship and two other top eights. Josh Adelayton's done this, got his fourth top eight in five seasons. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's pretty remarkable and uh the kind of you know breakthrough rate that you know you would you would see like the likes of someone like Paulo Vitor Domodorosa or someone like Gabriel Nassif like you know one in every four or five pro tours he's getting into a top eight we've seen silver gold and platinum world magic cup world championship rookie player of the year top eight champions but of course we're all winners because we all play the best game on earth been a tremendous Pro Tour season. Join us again for another just around the corner. Gothenburg, Providence in June gets our live video coverage underway. It never stops and let's hope it never does. Until we meet again somewhere around the great world of Magic the Gathering, for Brian David Marshall, I'm your host Richard Hagen saying bye.